What's Eating Fans. Hey guys, Dan here. I'm hanging out in uh, the conference room. <sighs> Backwards. Pears. And that's not what we're talking about at all today. We're talking about onions. Uh, so you guys had tons of awesome questions on the onion video. Actually, not a ton of questions, but there was a couple really good ones that I wanted to answer. Um, there were a lot of onion puns. There were a lot of people who were upset that I didn't have more onion puns in the video. Uh, a number of folks thought that it should have been onion soup, French onion soup for the big, this is how to eat onions, and I, I can't really argue with that. I feel like French onion soup, though, in a lot of ways is all about kind of beefiness. It's less about just like pure onion flavor. That's just me. It's a great soup, and I think you should make it, but onion dip. I just love onion dip so much. It's so good. So I've got some questions here from old school. Well, I'm also using the computer, so I printed them out. And uh, I'm going to answer five questions here. One of them is just me messing something up. Uh, so we'll get to that too. All right, so this first question comes from Sammy. Uh, and he, he asks, he, she, asks, when I do shrimp boils and crawfish boils, I always peel and add in whole onions should I quarter them instead? So uh, that's awesome that you do shrimp and, and, uh, and crawfish boils. I l absolutely love that. So here's the thing. If you add in a whole onion that you've just peeled, it's just going to be sweet, right? It's just going to be sweet. You're not going to you know, destroy any cell walls, really produce any intense oniony flavor. And you're also not going to get all that much into the liquid uh, that you're cooking. So it's not going to season st stuff that's in the pot uh, very well either. So if that's what you're looking for, something really sweet, something really mild, you don't want to do a lot of prep, Whole seems fine to me. Um, after fat, after you you know cook those, they're just going to be really sweet, and, and that's about it. Quartering them to me makes a lot of sense. You could leave you know a little bit of that stem end on so that they hold together, so they're not just flying you know flying all over the place. So that um, you know so that it maintains some structure there. But you'll definitely get more onion flavor. You know, period, more onion flavor into the liquid because there's all these cut surfaces, um, and you'll get more of that flavor onto the other stuff. So I like that idea. I like the way you're thinking. Um, so the next question is, comes from comes from ooh, uh, Joaquin von Grimorium. That's a name. That's a really good name. Uh, and Joaquin uh, says, <laughs> so Joaquin says, I just like to grate onions. I know it's a crime, but I don't cry while doing so. So I know I have no heart. Joaquin, stop, 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 stop. You're not. Uh, well, you might not have heart. No, you're, you're being hard on yourself here. So first off, grating onions, there's nothing wrong with grating onions. Basically, what you're doing is just destroying as many cell walls as possible. It's like if you watch the garlic video using a microplane to make garlic paste, you're just obliterating cell walls, so you create a ton of flavor when you grate an onion. We have an awesome tomato sauce recipe for Cook's Illustrated that we grate an onion. So you only use a small amount of onion and it doesn't get away, get in the way in terms of texture, but you get tons of onion flavor out of it. So it's an awesome method. The fact that you don't cry while doing doing it um, tells me maybe you wear like contact lenses or um, swim goggles. Maybe you just always wear swim goggles, or you're just working with pretty mild onions because um, that's that's you're damaging so much. You can see the liquid on your cutting board. Normally people would be tearing up, uh, but maybe you just got some superpower. So I would say superpower over you not having a heart. Um, that's, I think, you're being hard on yourself. Great question. Um, so this next one comes from uh, Miguel uh, Del Mazo, and uh, he's just calling me out, and I think he's probably right here. He says, what's a Vidalia? When I talk about Vidalia onions, he says, you mean Vidalia? Vidalia? And I looked it up and stuff. I, I think, you know, look, I'm from Massachusetts. I, I just... I don't know how to say the word right, and, and I messed it up. So I apologize, Miguel, and to anyone else who's from um, Vidalia. Uh, Vidalia? I hope I'm saying that right now. But um, that sounds a lot better, actually. Vidalia sounds like uh, so severe. Vidalia. Vidalia onions. Thanks for that one. Uh, keep calling me out. I appreciate that. All right, and the next one comes from uh, Riss, Riss Burke. Riss Burke. Uh, what about chopping and freezing onions as prep? So I mentioned in the video, you don't want to cut onions and then store them in the fridge ahead of time. Um, their flavor changes in not a pleasant way at all, and it happens relatively quickly. Uh, you definitely want to cook onions if you do them that way. But um, chopping and freezing onions, so you can actually buy frozen onions at the store, so you know it kind of works. Um, and so we did some testing here. Actually, the, the team at Cook's Country did uh, did this testing. Um, 
and it was it was pretty cool. So they they chopped them up, got them into a Ziploc bag, and got them right into the freezer, and then tested them. Um, you know, taking them out and thawing them first, or just cooking them straight, try them raw and cooked applications. And um, the, the the fact of the matter is, it, it works. So if you you know chop, go right into a Ziploc bag in a relatively thin layer, so that they freeze pretty quickly. That'll help kind of maintain their uh, their their structure, and it'll stop all that chemical reaction from taking place more quickly. So a pretty thin layer, go into the freezer. And then when you want to use them, pull out just what you need and go right into your saute pan or whatever you're, you're doing. Uh, you don't want to thaw them first. Uh, you, you get more of those chemical reactions starting up and you get a lot of liquid coming out. Just go right into the pan with them. And the key is you definitely want to go into the pan. You want to cook these. They're not going to be good raw. Um, you, you have a lot of, uh, you know, all those ice crystals forming in the, in the freezer damage tons of cell walls. And so these things will collapse and the texture is going to be pretty unpleasant afterward. But it doesn't matter if you're cooking them, you're collapsing all those cell walls and, um, and softening them anyway. So that's a good way. If you have like, you know, those big bags you buy at the supermarket and you, you know, want to save the ones before they go bad, chopping a Ziploc bag and freezing is a good way to do it. Great one. That's a great question. Um, and then... Uh, this final one is not a, a, a question, but a statement, and it comes from uh, birds the word to, no, birds the word, not to, the first birds the word. Um, uh, and he or she just says, uh, I wear swim goggles while cutting onions. And I don't think they're joking. And we actually, we did a ton of testing around like having an open window, um, keeping a, I think we had like a, a match in your, in your teeth or um, a candle in your body or a flame nearby, like all these different ways to prevent you from crying while you're cutting onions. And so I mentioned in the video, one of them is like using a sharp knife and you're going to damage less cell walls. It just glides through and that's definitely going to help you. Um, and that's just good across the board. It's going to be a lot safer and a lot better. So sharp knife is good. Uh, but when we did all that testing, we found like the only perfect way to guarantee that you don't cry when you cut onions um, is to actually have some goggles on your on your eyes. It's just blocking your, you from actually getting um, uh, getting those chemicals in your eyes. Uh, so if you have contact lenses, that can be helpful. Um, you know, the goggles is pretty good. But I don't know, maybe like, maybe you should cry a little bit when you cut onions, you know, like there are these beautiful things and um, you're starting a great meal and it's emotional and intense um, or just put on goggles. All right. Anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for the questions. Um, we got another video coming up uh, probably in a couple of weeks around a food that some of you love. I bet some of you hate. So stay tuned for that. Thanks.